Sarah. Uh, today I'm working on uh, metal embossing and this happens to be pewter and I love Alicia Hart art. I can put the link in the description box but she is the artist who I have come to know that does this and she's now mixing media so she's creating pieces that have polymer clay in them and this one you can see that she's added paper she's cut out some of the metal and added paper um, and anything that can combine uh, my loves uh, I love so she does a, she's in Alberta Canada and she does a lot of workshops and she's actually teaching at Artful Gatherings this uh, summer and I'm hoping to register for her class this was a kit that I bought from her from her um, website um, and these I just did on my own and basically designed them on a little notebook I just let's see these are here's the inspire I put inspire create a heart and just some ideas of what I wanted to add. It didn't turn out that way. I actually, well, it did actually. And when you, because I traced it. And then, I, I mean, I've made these a while ago. I don't know what the date is. And then this one is the love. And I did this one in copper. And this is the metal that I use. This is by Amaco, A-M-A-C-O, Art Emboss. Um, and it's pewter. It says medium weight. Let's see if it actually has the weight. I think um, there's only 12 inches. It's only 12 by 9 and a fourth. But uh, you can make a lot of like stuff with this. This was, I don't remember, I got it on Amazon. Probably like 12 bucks. I think it's under $20. Um, so that's what I'm working on today. So see, I just designed the piece in my notebook, and then I traced the design um, onto the metal. And remember, if you're making lettering, you have to do it opposite. So you want to do it on the back if you're if you're embossing. So if you're making it stick out, if you're debossing, you can write right on the front. Um, and then I designed this little guy too, and this is in the copper with my little birdie in the tree. It says home, family. Um, so yeah, and then I just mounted them. Oh, it was 2015. I mounted them on, these are little either, I believe they're similar to these that you can get at the craft store. So these are just in the wood department. Um, so what that brings me to is the piece I'm working on today. And see, I have this size too which I didn't use any of these. I think these are one by ones, one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So it's a really, it didn't work for the project I'm, I'm doing today, but let me show you what I'm working on. It's kind of evolved and I'm in the home stretch now, but originally I had thought of making a mixed media mosaic so on a mirror like I always do these are the dollar mirrors that you can get well it's not necessarily a mirror it's a frame right because you could put a mirror in there and I was thinking of putting a stained glass piece in the middle so it's a it's evolved as I've been creating but I made my own tiles my own um, art tiles right from chipboard I have a ton of chipboard and I think I cut it all up. Here it is. This is the chipboard and it's just, I think I got this at joannes.com. Let me go back out. Um, 12 by 12 sheets and you get a whole bunch of it. And I have it in black and, um, what is this called? This color. Cardboard color. So I was thinking I was going to do it with art tiles like this and just use my... Um, what are these jelly plate and make I have tons of jelly prints that I haven't used up so I just went through and I pulled purples and blues and cut them up into one by one pieces and I was gonna just make a frame like that 
And then I just thought, eh, I wanted to add some pewter tiles as well. So I did these corner pieces in pewter. So I have these four, and I'll show you them in more detail in a second. Because I wanted to mix my mediums, right? So, and I edged these. I just glued the chipboard. This is two layers of chipboard. So I cut this into one inch strips and then I cut it into one, and then I glued two pieces together to just make it a little thicker, which you really didn't need to do. But, and so I did that the same thing for the here. This is what it is. So I cut these in two by two and then glued them together so that they're a little bit thicker to make it more of a tile. Um, and then I glued the jelly prints to the top of that. And then I just used my finger and edged these with silver paint and I did a little bit of stamping on some of them. So then I was just like, yeah, but I don't know. And then these didn't fit right. It didn't really fit. It wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So then I'm like, well, let me just make a bunch of pewter tiles. So that's what I ended up doing. So this one's not going to be as mixed media as I was thinking it was going to be. And, you know, who knows? Maybe because I'm going to make some clay tiles. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the filler tiles with, I think, white clay. And this is silver leaf foil, silver foil. Um, I've done gold leafing before with polymer clay, but I'm going to use the silver foil. And I probably won't even stamp into it. I think I might. We'll see. Maybe I have a stamp that's like a swirly stamp. I, well, I know I do. And But anyway, this is by Art Minds. And there is sheets of silver. Oh, boy leaf in between these pages. So I'm going to put this on polymer clay. There it is. And bake it and then I'll have my filler tiles because if I if I roll out the clay to like one of the thickest settings, I still can cut it. These, This is what I've been using is my tonic scissors, the Tim Holtz tonic scissors, to cut everything. The, the pewter cuts like butter. That's what they say. So that's not a problem. Um, and actually, no, I didn't. I used my paper cutter. I just put in one of my duller blades because I save, like I have this whole little bag of old blades when they start getting dull. So I just put a dull blade in there and it cuts the chipboard just fine. So let me show you, and then we'll get into the embossing. I'll do a tile with you. Um, so this is my, come in now, look at that shining. And I'm no expert at this, for sure. So I would recommend that you go watch Alicia. She has on YouTube, on her YouTube channel, she has a great tutorial just with the basic um, pewter embossing um, techniques. And I have a set of tools that I ordered from her. Um, like I said, I've been doing this. I've done it for a little bit. You need a paper stump and that's basically it. You can, you can emboss with a pencil or a pen or a stylus. Really all you need is like this basically is a stylus right here. So you can do this stuff with a stylus. This has a Teflon tip too. So maybe you could use your Teflon um, this thing, you know, or, you know, who knows, you know, you're crafty, you guys will figure it out. All right, so I started out with, and these aren't perfect, but I think I got better as I went. Um, so I'll zoom in and I'll show you, but I did do the size, the ones that I bought at the store. I did some of these. These are actually one and a half by, let's see, by two one and a half by two so I use these and then I ended up covering a couple of these with the pewter as well and that fit and then I'm gonna use clay to, to fill the other space so let's see what I did here I think um, I 
I'll end up dis uh, arranging everything in such a way that it, um, so you have one more to do. So that's the one I'm going to walk through with you guys. I'll arrange it, like I said, in such a way that it, the colors, because I've been coloring the pewter, adding my color with Sharpies. So that's how you can add a little bit of color to your tiles as well. So these are the tiles so far. And then these four spaces, I think I'm going to leave them on the outside, are going to be the clay in, um, with the silver foil. So let me just set this aside and I'll show you each tile. I think I'm going to do the corners first. These were, I think Hope was my first one. Now I also used uh, stencils. These stencils are the really kind of, well this one's not, but these are definitely, well maybe this one's not even, but you know this one is like the $1.50 and they're more stiff. So I like using these if you're going to use them for, and I haven't used them yet on my tiles, but I want to. These patterns I haven't used. But I did use these words. So here is, love is on here. I used the love. I used hope and wish. Here's hope and here's wish. No, that's smile. Look, I use smile right here. Whatever words would fit. And then I have this other, and I, I just didn't end up using any of them. Um, but all right, so here I think I did hope first. And you can tell it's a little bit scratchy looking. Um, I wasn't sure how to get things to pop. But I think it looks fine. It's handmade. Like, see, it's a little scratchy inside the E. Like, I probably had the Teflon tool. And when I was pressing, I made scratchy marks in it. So I'm not, a per I'm not perfect at it yet. And that's why I really want to take a class with her. Even though I did the kit and she has a couple videos, it's not the same thing as actually being in her presence to be able to ask questions. And some of this design is embossed and some's debossed. So the, some lines go down and some lines come up and protrude up. So the cloud is up, the sun is down, and the hope is up. And then I just colored it with my Sharpies. And so that's hope. Smile is cute. Now the other thing is, I just started to zentangle after I was like, I couldn't think of um, what to what designs to use. I just went through my ATCs and looked through at different zentangles that I've done for patterns and all types of things. And I mean, these were just for inspiration, but I could you I could make this pattern um, on a pewter tile. So um, that's what I did. I just because. I work best like that. It's not in my head. I was looking at my other pieces for inspiration, but this little smile tile turned out really cute. I just put smile in the middle because I was kind of working with the word at the top or the bottom, but this one I put in the middle. And then I just zentangled, really, basically put a, a, a flower at the top and a little, this is another, I forget what she called this, a texture tool, a texture wheel. I think this is the only one that I use the texture wheel on. I think so. Because I don't feel comfortable. It's dented. I don't feel comfortable with the technique and I and I didn't love how it turned out so I didn't do it after that. So that's my smile. Here's love. And I mean it's just hearts and the word love and I like this little thing like here. Let me show you. I didn't put any orange. Let's put some orange up here. Um, good enough. So I have, oop, I have that little scallop there just to fill in. And if you're zentangling, it's like doodling. You can doodle on here. So I don't love this one. <laughs> but 
you know, it's when it's in the mosaic, it'll look fine. And then my last one is Wish, and I think this was the last one I did, and it's the neatest, and it's got, also, um, I take black paint. Now she has, a, on her videos, she recommends using a permanent water-based marker. And I, what, I don't know where to get a permanent water-based marker, so I have to figure out what brand it is, because, like, the, um, the fabric Estelle is India ink, and it's waterproof. So I don't think that's water-based. I don't know. So I didn't use that. So I was looking around. Now I guess your, your paint pens would probably work, but I don't think they're ink. They're not an ink. It's paint. So I just used regular old black craft paint, um, and it works fine. So the idea is you just want it to, to sit in the nooks and crannies, and define your design a little bit. So I'm just kind of cleaning up a little bit. The Wish it is um, embossed, I guess. No, it's yeah, it's embossed. It comes up, but the rest of it is debossed, and so the black paint stays in those nooks and crannies. And then I just colored it in and made a little Wish. And I did scratch this actually. I did scratch that. I see. But then I just colored it in. So. Then I have these guys. These were my little ones. And I have two that go sideways and two that go up and down. And they're basically, these two are just, I just made tangles. I made lines and then just zentangled inside. I wrote Serenity in there, put some hearts and you know, you can see what I did. Some flowers and play. I wrote play. I wrote words on pretty much every tile. Actually, I think I did write a word on every single tile. Um, play on this one with the flowers. I like this one. This one is the last one I did. Actually, the second to last one I did. So I'm getting better and better. See, my fly is way more, it's just neater. They're getting neater. Um, and this one is just another Zentangle that it says home. This was the first little one I did. So I have those four. And then these were the ones that are wrapped. I wrapped those little pieces of wood. So this. And I'll show you how I do that. This one I really didn't love, but I did. I already I recreated it twice. Where's my scrap? So I messed this one up. So my word, I, I made my C and my R too big. So it's better if you, especially when you need spacing and you're doing a word, that you trace. So I should have just traced this first onto paper, just like I've been doing on the notebook. Where did I leave? So these. This is the one I'm going to do with you guys. Be happy. So trace it on there and write your word down so you can see it. And then, if you're gonna, if it's gonna be embossed, you might even want to write it on tracing paper, which I had a piece of tracing paper here, so you can flip it over and read it backwards and copy it backwards, so you can get the word on there. Which I'll probably do that because I'd like to see this embossed. Actually, this might look good embossed too. Hmm. We'll see. I'd like to make this puffy. Oh, you can't even say it. The B scap. I'd like to make that puffy. So anyway, just having your design ahead of time is very important. But see this one, my lettering, I just, and so I just scrapped it. I thought, no, that just really looks too, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> it didn't pass mustard, muster, I don't know. So this one came out better. And then I decided to just put one flower instead of having the three. I put one and I tried to emboss it, but I dent it. I dent all my embossed stuff. So I, I have to figure this out. Um, and I probably have too much black paint in here because when it's embossed, you don't really need it. You really need it in the debossed areas. That's where I like it the best. Um, and this is just a Q-tip. I'm just rubbing the paint will come off. It's not, I haven't um, varnished and I'll probably spray these with, um, what is it called? You guys know. A lacquer spray type thing. So that's my Create. 
and then I did Dream. So this one looks good with the debossing, and I didn't, you know, it's a cloud, so I just did it pink. But this one looks good, and then even though the black is in the, the rays, I still put a little orange next to the line just to bring more color in. And I did Dream, and just because it's sticking up, but you can brighten that up. It looks like I've just been handling it a little bit. But it does stay on there. The um, alcohol ink. So your Sharpies or your um, Copics, all those guys will work. So I like my dream. And then this is the last one I did. And this is definitely based off of one of my Zentangles. And there it is. And I actually didn't, I did these as an afterthought, the little dots. So no black got in those, but it looks fine. And that says live. I like it. So I'm getting better. And this is all just debossed from the top. So this is the simplest design to do. So let me show you how I make a tile. So I have one more to go on this project, and then I'm going to do the polymer clay. When you emboss metal, you need a hard surface. So this is a masonite board. Let me scan back out. This is a masonite board. I don't know where I got it. I've had it in my craft supplies. So it's actually, oh, hello, I painted on it. So I probably got this in a, at a class. Um, but it probably, they just sell them in art, art supply store. Um, and this was a class that I took. I can't remember the name of the teacher, and there's no date. But I obviously didn't love it, so I'm using it as um, my masonite board because you need a hard surface. It says gesso board, I think it says on here. So I have that. Then Alicia recommends that you have... Uh, about three, four, five pieces of paper together. So I've stapled these together. This is one, two, three, four pieces of paper. And then I've taken a couple notes on here. But this is um, your medium surface. So this is hard, medium, and here's your soft surface. And this is basically just craft foam. And this one's getting really soft. I have another piece that's a bit firmer. But when you want to deboss into the pewter, you need, you need a soft surface. Um, so that's basically it. And then your tools. And for this, I'm going to need my paper stump. Which it's got a lot of black on it. I'm just going to try to clean off some of the black. It doesn't really matter, actually. Um, I have, this is your main one, a stylus. That's really all you need to do this, the pewter and the stylus. But this has the Teflon tip. Um, and then this is a, um, a ball making tool. So when I do these little dots, it makes them a lot more rounded. And so I have that. And so I may, let's think. Mm, I may use this because I may do little flowers. So we may do the centers of the flowers. So I've already cut my piece of pewter which is where, oh lord, <clears throat> I was so prepared and look I, are, I did this um, Altoid tin too a while ago and I keep my little scraps in here. I have a couple nibs, there's a piece of copper, but I just did the same thing. I, I cut it to the size, so I'll show you. I just had it because I moved it so it wouldn't be in the, it wouldn't glare. I probably covered it up. Oh, Lord. I'll be right back. I got it. But yeah, so, and I just added these little parts. The, uh, the sides didn't have anything on. I, I could still put a little piece back here, but I had scraps. So I just made little pieces that fit the sides and added this design that is, well, just my little leaves because I had leaves sticking in all around. I love it. All right. 
So first thing you want to do is get your pewter and I'm going to talk about that for one second. When you get your pewter, you need to mark the back. Um, Alicia talks about this in her video. Once you've unrolled the metal, you can't tell which is the back and which is the front. So you want to, when you unroll it, just take the whole sheet and you see what I've done. I've just made a black line. A very Don't push too hard. Just make a black line with your Sharpie and then roll it back onto the roll so that when you're working with it, you know the back from the front. Um, let me put that away. I have already gone ahead and cut my piece. So what I've done is I took it from the back, I laid my tile on there, and I just used even spacing. I didn't measure. You just want enough. So when you cut, I'm going to miter these corners, and you want to fold it up to adhere it to the tile. So you just need enough on the edges that will, um, a lot of paint on that one. It'll give you um, something to grip the back with. So, on all of these, it's not the same. It's not necessarily perfect on each one, but they're definitely enough that it's going to hold it on the tile. So once you've established that, you just go ahead and cut it. And I've been using the Tim Holtz tonic scissors, and if you're a crafter, you probably have these in your stash, and they work great because. Also, I'm going to be using this Sook Wang um, double-sided tape, and um, Alicia recommends this when she's mounting things, uh, so I got it in the big roll. Amazon, um, but it doesn't stick to the sonic to the tonic scissors, um, the sticky back. So because this has like a Teflon coating on it, anywho. So now I've got my tile, and I've just outlined where the design is going to go. Okay, so now here's from the front. You can see that's my area where I want to emboss and create my tile. So I'm going to do this little be happy. It's going to be in the um, horizontal, what is this, vertical? Vertical, um, not landscape in other words. Uh, we're going to create a B step. So let me show you my design. I just roughly did this. And I'm um, actually, when I do it, I'm going to grab my pencil again. I'm going to make this a little more curved. Each one I'm going to make, I just wanted to get a look at it, but I'm going to do it more. Each, each little thing is going to be curved when I do it. And I'm going to put the line in the middle. I'm going to do this one first before I put a line and then go like that. And then like that. And I am going to kind of curve them down. So in other words, have it shaped like this. Because then it gives it the illusion that it's rounded. Right? And so like this. This is what I'm, how I'm going to finish it off. And I'm going to put a handle on it. I don't know why, but this is one in my decorative painting... Um, we've always added a little handle. I'm going to make little um, bees, and the, this is a big one. So I'm just going to make them like this. So a little teardrop, and then wings. So little like that. That's it. That's the simplest little bee, and he's giant. So maybe he's the closest one. And then you make little ones in the back. Um, you could put a flower. So I'll probably have a flower because I just love adding as many little um, design ideas, little pieces of grass maybe, right? Because then when we color it, you have little bits and bobs that you can add color to. I'm also going to do wording. So I'm going to do B, just like B, happy, and I'm just doing it in print. As neat as, you know, my, ne my neatest printing because this is going on the vertical, it's not landscape. I did this in landscape, but I just wanted to show you. Um, you could always put a sun or a cloud or a flower coming in from the top or whatever. It's as entangled, cutesy. Um, you could put scallops, but I'm probably just gonna stick with uh, the B-scap, 
maybe a flower, a couple little flowers, and some bees and be happy. So I'm gonna keep it real basic, but I just wanted to show you, you know, make it your own. Like, you know, like this is one of the ideas when I was in, or um, not since, yeah. Make, you make your tangles in such a way, right? And then you can fill them with whatever you want, whatever design. So if you have, like these were just some ideas that I was thinking of. I was gonna do a little bird with a tree. I didn't love it. Um, these are just some Zentangle patterns, I was thinking. And I love the arrow idea. That was really cool, and I never used that. The music notes, um, just a simple um, teardrop stroke flowers so you know have a play first with some ideas go around like look this is definitely stuff that I saw on Pinterest that um, Alicia does in her artwork so to create the look of clouds and give the piece flow and have everything going but then she puts curvy lines inside though I had to do that let's see if I did that on here um, no I didn't I made them my own way but that was a kit so you know um but this is this is my design let's see what else I did so I never did this one but I was doing a patriotic like summertime one um, hope I did do and then these are just more tangly designs that you can use so here's a dragonfly because I love dragonflies this is just like a plaid looking you know, so just different ideas that you can do with Zentangle. So have a sit down. Look, this little rose is adorable. Maybe I'll do one of them. It's just simple. You just do a swirl, connect it, make a little base, and there you have it. So a little rose. And you color it red, and it's going to look gorge. All right, so let's get to work. Let's see what I come up with now. Here's the thing, I'm not an expert, so please look into Alicia's. Um, I did make some notes, but they weren't great. They're on here in it. Yeah. Anywho, I'm going to start with my um, steel stylus, steel tip stylus. Um, we want to do be happy, and I, but I want to get my spacing first. Be happy. So I'm going to start with the B skep and I think I'm going to start on the back because I want it to be um, I think I'm going to draw it because I don't want to mess this up and I'm going to go about here and but if it's that fat the flowers are going to have to come up higher, which I don't mind that. All right, so that gives me, I know where I'm going. Now, I think, and see how I'm on the paper? I'm not positive that I should be on the paper, but I'm going from the back because I want this to puff out a little bit. So, no, I'm not. I'm going to start on the front. Damn it, this is difficult. See, I'm no expert, so when you're not with me, I just wing it and figure it out. <laughs> but all right, let me just go. Um, you know what we'll do first? We'll put the hole. And right now I'm debossing. I'm pretty sure this is called. And we're on the medium. So it's going down. And then you push, push pressure on it and it'll flatten out the... Okay, good. So now let's go... One... looking good so far. I figured it out. Hold on. Well, that was a little crooked. All right, so I'm going to now connect these lines with that curvy line. And Make sure that, all right, and then I'm going to put a top on it. Oops, got away from me. 
good enough. Now I think I'm going to turn it over and we're going to take the paper stump and I'm going to just gently push to make that a little bit puffy. And that's how you get a dimensional emboss or deboss. So let's see. Yeah, because I don't want it to stick up too much. I want this to go in. And I'm just going to go over this one more time on the really soft surface. And then I don't want to push too hard. Gently stretch the pewter. And then we're going to go around the design and push down the background. Okay, and do the hole. I think that looks puffy. I like it. Okay, now hopefully the lines that I etched in there between each row will catch that black paint. So now we want to do be happy. Mm, I'm going to just write it, but here's what I was saying about, and I had, here it is. So here's my thought when it comes to writing words that you don't want to be um, backwards. So I take this, so I know how big I'm going a little bigger and I'm gonna write how I want it be that looks pretty good just for spacing and eyeballing but I'll probably go a little smaller <clears throat> and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna Go over my tracing. Oh, that's too long. P, P, Y. So my happy looks like a P. I just went up my thing in my A. So that's how you would write it backwards. And I'm going to try and be more careful than that. I'm going to do it on the soft with my Teflon tip on the back and I'm gonna try and do this so let me zoom in alright and go for it I'm a heavy hand and I'm I always go bigger than I end up wanting to be but I'm gonna go B just gently. You don't need to push too hard because the metal will stretch gradually. A A H Sorry, I don't need to say it. Obviously you know how to spell happy. A Oops. I almost went the other way with my P because I'm making cues. See, I don't have enough room for my Y. That's my fear, but I think I made it happen. So I'm pushing down. I'm going to go on my hard surface now. Take the stump and push up against the lines we just made to flatten the metal around it and you'll get a crispier impression. I'm going to use my Teflon tip and I'm really going to get in between. So that looks like a B.
the reflection is really blinding. It's blinding me. I wonder if it's blinding you. Just sharpening these up and giving them an embossed, I guess, right? Am I wrong? B, debossed or embossed? I'm thinking that debossed means it's going into it, <coughs> excuse me, from the front. <coughs> I think my Y is good enough. Well, it's not the best, but I don't hate it. I can live with it. Don't want to get crazy and start poking in again. See, I went out of the lines already. When you try to fix it, sometimes you don't. So, it's better left alone. I just fix that pretty good. And you can just push down the metal around the design and it kind of smooths it out. So I like that. It says be happy. So now we're just going to emboss the rest of the design or deboss, I guess I should say. <clears throat> I'm going to make, I don't know if I have enough room for flowers. I'm going to put a B right up here. So just a little teardrop shape and some wings. And some antennas, gotta have your antennas. I really am getting a really bright um, reflection that is uh, it's hard to see what I'm doing I'm probably oh that looks fine all right there's a bee maybe I'll just put a flower see I don't have room for the handle see how everything always gets bigger I'm gonna make a, I'm just gonna show you how you use this ball tool I'm going to make a flower right here and right here on the soft surface. Then you flip it over onto the hard and there's a cup tool and you just go over the cup or you cup that little ball that you made and I'm just going to make a flower. And a little stem and a leaf. I just like to press that metal down and see if it helps it. Well, that's cute. I think I can be done. I think I am going to be done. I don't want to push my luck. Maybe put the handle. <clears throat> See, I think when you, <coughs> sorry, I was out of the shot. When you push down the metal around the lines you made, you really get a much better result. And I didn't do that on all of them, but I really would love to figure that out. All right, so the next thing, I'm going to zoom back up. I'm going to add the tape, so I just take my tape, roll it out, and this one actually fits really well. Um, oops, you want to put it on the back, so make sure you're on the right side. Just line it up, good enough. I'm going to cut it with my scissors. 
So here's what I was talking about. It doesn't stick as much when you use this non-stick. <clears throat> and then I take my stump and I kind of press down these edges at least to make sure that it, the tape is stuck to the uh, pewter. And I'm going to go around the design one more time on and around the words, the background. So I don't want to push down on the B step because I work to get that to puff up. But everything else you can go around it on the background. And now we're going to cut the little, um, let me think, cut the mitered edges. So I just kind of go to the corners. And I don't save this or anything, I don't know. Some people save all that stuff, but I don't. So I mitered my corners. And I guess I'll cut this off because there's no tape there. But see, this is the pewter, and it cuts like butter. All right, so let's get our tile. And you can either add your black before you put it on the tile or after. I've been doing it after. I don't know why. I'm going to move this out of the way and just bring in my messy old paper towel. Well, I'll use a clean one. But you peel this off. And line it up once you stick it down it's pretty stuck so try and get it <laughs> lined up like I hope I got my beat okay and then just give it a press and push it around to the back and that's basically it I like to kind of go around the corners because they can be sharp. Just round the corners on your hard surface. And I've actually cut some of these too, but you know what? Rounding it is a good idea. And I like the way it looks with the high shine, but I want to see that detail. So I'm just going to give this a press now that it's on the wood too. And make sure it is adhered. Then we're going to patina with black paint. So I just I've just been using the same old old paintbrush, and I just put the paint right on there. Straight paint, not watered down or anything. And make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies. And I leave it on there for a sec. And let it kind of, because I'm such a heavy hand, when I wipe, I will, I'll pull it out of the nooks and crannies and I have to do it again. So basically, that is it. Then I'm going to color it with my Sharpie. So let me get some of this stuff. And I just, you know what, I buy my AC more. You can buy Sharpies kind of individually. But I think I got a kit. Like I think this one, yeah, this was definitely, and this was a, a cancer awareness one. But I've, I've gotten some of them individually and some of them, like I just, I know I just got this brown and I had a brown. Look at that. So I already had a set. I think I just got this one because I don't know, I didn't have a dark blue. I have, I have two of these. So I have two, two of some colors. All right, let me wipe this off. So a dry paper towel. 
and she says to pull it in one direction. And here I go in two directions right away, don't I? I don't like it when the words get really, really dark, so. Because they're already sticking up, so I think that isn't my main goal. The flowers were important. And the bee, right? But you can see it. Probably take a Q-tip. No, see, I, I need it in there. You do need it in the nooks and crannies of the letters. Not that dark, though. I like it. But see, I dented it. I did dent that little, oop, this little part of the B skip. And I know that Alicia uses uh, beeswax, actually. When she embosses and it's a raised surface, she will fill in the raised surface. So all of this stuff, like if I wanted to use my Teflon tip now that I, well, it's too late. I already did it differently. Um, yeah, this is already, but like, Actually, I should be using my um, See, I'm such I'm so rough. I have to really learn to be gentle. So I was trying to make that into a teardrop, but this is, it's hollow now. So the, the metal actually makes a concave. So she would fill this with hot wax and she likes the beeswax because it um, hardens right away and you can move on with your project because some people use spackle or, you know, um, all the paste that are on the market, but you have to wait a good 24 hours. So with the beeswax, you can um, just keep moving with your project. So let's see, I wanna paint my bees, my bee with, I guess, yellow, right? And he has little black stripes, but that's okay. We'll just make him yellow. Um, the bee skep should be like a light brown, and I don't think I have, I have this gold color. What color is this? Gold. I don't know if it would look right gold. It's a metallic so it's not even really showing up. But yeah, that's dented. Because the B-step, I guess I'll make it brown. And you know what I've noticed too about the Sharpies is you can kind of smudge them with your finger. When they're wet, if you don't want the full strength of the color, just smudge it. And it, it, it'll give you a later version. So here's the green for the leaves. And you don't have to be perfect with the, the, the coloring for sure um, because I don't I like the hand, the handmade look of it. Do I want purple flowers or pink? I want pink. I put a lot of purple on the piece. I like that purple sharpie color. And the be happy I'll do in blue because it kind of looks like the sky. wanted it to look more black than brown. Um, I love this blue color. Let me use my Teflon. Can't find it. 
and push this B in a little more. Just, I probably shouldn't be doing that after it's already adhered, but like I said, I'm no expert. I am just an amateur. I'm just hitting the raised areas to give it a pop of color. It's raining again, you guys. I am so over this rain. I love it. Okay. And here's the other thing. See, this is what I was saying about, like, in the background. You, I forget all the time. But you could just put these little texture marks, these little dots. And if I'd have done them before the black, obviously, they'd be filled with. Um, but that just adds a little more texture to the background. All right, so let's look at the whole piece. So I'll zoom up. And basically, I will be back and we'll do a little tutorial on how to um, make silver foil. I want to put silver foil on the, um, so I guess I did this upside down, um, on the clay, on polymer clay. Sorry, I can't think and chew gum at the same time. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I like it. Okay. The butterfly can go over here with the be happy. Serenity with dream. And play with live. So that's it. That's the whole design. I'm going to, like I said, I'll be back and create the clay tiles. And glue everything down. Maybe I'll have it all glued, but when we do the clay tiles, I'm going to have to kind of do a measurement or kind of have an idea of the size I want to cut the tiles to. Um, I can always cut them, so we'll see. Alright you guys, thanks for watching.